everybody, welcome to my channel. My name's Mel. Thank you so much for joining me today for October's Roll of Reads. The first thing that I want to do today is say a big welcome to anyone that is joining me for the first time for Roll of Reads. There's quite a few new subscribers to the channel recently, so welcome. Thank you so much for joining me and I really, really hope that you enjoy. Before I get into the Roll of Reads, I just wanted to let you know about a couple of things. First of all, if you are new to the channel or you haven't watched my 500 subscriber celebration video, just letting you know that I do have a giveaway that is going on throughout the month of October so head on over to the 500 subscriber celebration video link is in the eye and also down in the description so that you can join in that giveaway so thank you all again so very much for joining me I'm also going to go through the game quickly for anyone that hasn't seen it before but before I get started on any of the stuff that we need to do for today's video I just wanted to remind everyone that I do always put the breaks in um, so it's all in the description below so if you know how the rules all work and you just want to get straight to the gameplay you can go and see the timestamps for that will be in the description below so you don't have to listen to me talk about the rules and what I read last month because we do have a little bit of admin to get through so first of all I just wanted to walk you through my TBR game which is obviously what this is. So every single month I play Roll of Reads which is my TBR game that I created very much inspired by Becca from Becca and the Books and her Bookopoly very much also inspired by Cody from Cody's Reading Corner and her Wheel of TBR and all the other amazing people out there who do do TBR games. So all of the people that I talk about are in the description below. So I wanted to create a TBR game. So the first thing I decided to use D&D dice because I play D&D. So I thought I'll use the dice. I've actually got a new lot of D&D dice. These are somewhat oversized because you weren't able to see the smaller dice very well in these videos. So I bought the bigger ones so they'd show up better. So I started with a 20 sided dice. I said to myself, well, in combat, when you roll a one, you basically fail out in combat, drop your sword, fall over, hurt yourself, something like that. So if I roll a 1 in my game, I have to add an extra roll. But equally, if you roll a 20 in D&D, then that's a crit. That's a critical hit. It's pretty amazing. You get to double your damage. It's you, it's an automatic hit, so it's a pretty great roll. So I thought that if I roll a 20, I will get to basically do whatever I want. So I can insert a buddy read, I can do the prompt that is on the 20, or I can ignore it completely, do a mid read. Mid read. So that's kind of where I started. And then with that, I thought, well, I obviously need numbers between 1 and 20. So I have created my game board. So we start number one up top here um, and the arrow indicates you know that's not a great roll and then we have the 20 all the way down the bottom which obviously an arrow going up indicating great job you got a 20. That's the game board. Then I have a bunch of cards. I have about 80 or so cards here and I shuffle them obviously and then place them out on the board 1 through 20. I take a 12 sided dice and I roll the 12 sided dice and that determines how many rolls I have to do on my 20 sided dice so how many books I'll end up reading so throughout the gameplay once I figured out how many rolls I have to do I roll a 20 for each roll and then with that is how I then pick up the prompts say I roll a number 12 pick up the card that's on number 12 that's the prompt I have to do and then I replace that and I keep going doing that until I get to however many rolls the 12 sided dice told me to do. However, if I roll the same number on the 20 sided dice three times, then I have to add another roll as well. I was also doing it so that I had punishments. If I didn't even start a book in the previous month, then I had to add extra rolls. But my partner Rowan suggested that maybe that was just gonna compound the problem. So instead I have punishment cards as well as regular cards. So for each book that I don't read from the preceding month, I have to add that number of punishment cards and I have around 20 or so punishment cards. So each time I end up on a punishment card, I replace it from the punishment cards. So that is the very basic gameplay just to give you all a rundown of how all of that works. I'm now going to let you know what books I ended up with last month so that we know whether I have any punishments and then I'll go ahead and do all of the rolls. So in September was Book Oblathon and also Magical Reads and also the Because We Can Readathon and I also did my 
Roll of Reads. So all of the rolls for Bacoplathon and my Roll of Reads went towards the Magical Reads TBR and also towards the Because We Can TBR. They are in their own separate video so I will link that in the description below so you can go and check that out if you'd like. And I'll also link my Bacoplathon which I did separately again as well so you can go and check that out as well if you would like. Because Bacoplathon was a different game I won't be counting any of the books that I did or didn't read towards punishments but roll of reads will so I decided instead of doing the 12 sided dice for that round I would do a six sided dice just because I already had half a TBR done so obviously this is my six sided dice that I use and I got a six for that so for the prompt I got least favorite color on the cover that was one of the punishment prompts from the previous and I did start the book so I chose The Great Hunt by Robert Jordan this is the second book in the Will of Time I have started it as I said before we're at the end of September so it's the 27th today so I definitely won't finish this by the end of September but I reckon I'll get a bit further into it so I'm going to count it as not needing a punishment because the deal is that I have to at least start it I'll probably just read it throughout this month as well but anyway the point being I've started it I've gotten a little way into it I won't count it as a punishment. Then I got the prompt Neurodiverse Representation and for this I chose to read Earthlings by Sayaka Murata and I did read this one. And then I got the prompt Dictionary Word of the Day. So the way this works is I have to look up the Dictionary Word of the Day and then whatever it is I choose a book based on that prompt. So I got the word Xanadu and I decided to go with The Fellowship of the Ring by J.R.R. Tolkien. Yeah. I did read this one. And then the next role that I got was audiobook and I actually had two options for this one so I was not 100% sure which one I'd end up choosing throughout the month. One was to all the boys I love I've loved one was To All the Boys I've Loved Before by Jenny Han and the other one was The Raven King by Nora Sakovich. So I actually have started both of these books. I am about two thirds of the way through The Raven King so I reckon again I will get that finished. I did start the other one like I said but I didn't get it finished and I just kind of let it slide. So I'm counting it that punish <laughs> words what even are they? I'm counting that roll as completed because I started two audiobooks so no punishment for that. Then I got another punishment roll and that was the cats don't pick so I did the whole thing where I got books out put treats on them and whichever cat whichever one the cat didn't choose is the one that I had to read so for this one it ended up being Ariadne by Jennifer Saint and I did read this one and then the final prompt that I got was an award winner and for this one I chose Every Word by Elimani. I cannot remember what award this one but it did win an award. I haven't actually read this one yet but again I read the first one in this series which is Every Breath super quickly. I read it in like two and a half days so I'm definitely going to be able to get this done and I actually left it till the end of the month on purpose because our live show for this is this coming Saturday so Saturday the 2nd of October. So for anyone that doesn't know uh, myself and Ellie from Elgro Books and Lana from Laura and Lullabies run the Last to Read book club and this is the series that we started with. We did Every Breath last month, Every Word this month in September and then we'll be doing Every Move next month in October. I have not read this yet but I will do so that will not be a punishment. So that brings me to the next little bit of housekeeping that I need to do and that is to talk you through some of my reading commitments for the month of October. So the first of these is Every Move by Elimani. This is the third book in the trilogy, the Every Trilogy. So this is the next book for our Last to Read book club. So I have to read this in October. Then I have a buddy read with Connor from Connor's Library Corner and we will be buddy reading The Birthday at the End by Adam Silvera. So I have to try and fit that one in as well. And then I have some other book clubs that I'd like to join in for this month also. So for Chloe's Crime Scene Corner, this month's book is is The Devil in the White City by Eric Larson. I'd really like to try and fit this one in if I possibly can. Then there is a Lord of the Rings read-along happening at the moment which is being hosted by Bethany from Beautifully Bookish Bethany and I have very kindly been asked to be part of that the live shows so I will be joining that and reading the next book. So that one is The Two Towers by obviously J.R.R. Tolkien. Then I am buddy reading all of the Terry Pratchett's 
with my friend Ellie from Earl Grey Books. We're doing it in order of publication. So the next one is Pyramids. Helen from Helen's Bookhaven is running the Eurovisionathon read along bloody read book club. Anyway, uh, um, so this month's pick is Burial Rights for Iceland by Hannah Kent. I thought that I owned this, but I actually own a different book by Hannah Kent. So I'm not going to prioritize this one, but if I don't have too big a TBR, then I will try and fit that one in. And then also I'll be continuing with The Great Hunt. Part of the reason why I slowed down with this one is because I'm reading it as part of the Wheel of Time read along that's being hosted by Anna from... I did this last time. I couldn't remember her channel name. So sorry, Anna. A book dream is Ali. That's it. And Melissa from... I can't remember her channel name either. But they're all in the description. And CC from CC's Reading Journey. But everyone who's joining in that, the majority of people are still reading or were still reading the first one, The Eye of the World. So it's sort of just been slow. So those are all the books that I am obligated to read in the month of October. Hopefully I will get to them all. Hopefully whatever happens in the rolls, I'll be able to fit them in. So let's go now and do the roll on the 12 sided dice to see what we're going to have to do this month. Our 12 sided dice. So as you just saw, I did get a number 12 on the 12 sided dice. Of course it would be the highest number that there is. Now we need to do our first roll. So fingers crossed, I do not get any ones or any double numbers, uh, triple numbers, I should say. But yeah, let's go now and do roll number one. First roll. Seven. And we have New York Times best selling author. Okay, so as you just saw, the first roll that I got was the number seven, and number seven, the prompt was New York Times best selling author. So I've just done a very little Google search, and it turns out that they both die at the end by, well, Adam Silvera himself is a best selling author. They both Die at the End, which is the book I need to read for my buddy read with Connor, is in fact a best-selling book. So I don't know a huge amount about this particular book. I know that it is a contemporary with some magical elements to it. Connor has actually read it before, so this is a reread for him, and he said that it's one of his favourite books of all time. So I'm super excited to read it. I've heard so many good things about this book. All right, roll number two. Ten. Ten, ten, ten. A gift or from a subscription box. And roll number two, I got the number 10, which got me a gift or from a subscription box. So for this one, I've chosen a book that I've actually put on a TBR before, but like this one seems like it's going to be, it was a really big TBR, so I didn't get to it. The book that I've chosen is Kingdom of the Wicked by Kerry Maniscalco. This was gifted to me by Connor for my birthday, so thank you again, Connor. So this one is about two sisters, Amelia and Vittoria. One night, Vittoria doesn't come home, and Amelia discovers that her twin is dead and has been the body's been desecrated so she seeks vengeance and calls on some dark magic and that's when she meets Wrath who is one of the wicked a prince of hell it sounds really good I've heard fantastic things about this one as well and yeah I'm really really excited to give this one a shot roll number three twelve you're right divergent rep Roll number three, I got the number 12, and the prompt for that is Neurodivergent Rep. So for this one, I have decided that I am going to read The Pride Test by Helen Huang. This is the second book in a, series, in a trilogy that are kind of a trilogy of companion books. So the first one was The Kiss Quotient, and this is the second one. I have read The Kiss Quotient. I read it a couple of months ago, and I did enjoy it quite a bit. I'm really looking forward to this one. This one follows Kai, and he is on the autism spectrum. It's about him trying to have a relationship. I've heard from a number of different booktubers who identify as being on the spectrum themselves that this is really fantastic autism rep. I'm really excited to read this one. It sounds really interesting. Roll number four. A three. 
mentioned in the Gilmore Girls. So my fourth roll got me the number three and the prompt for this one is mentioned in the Gilmore Girls. So the Gilmore Girls is a TV show. One of the main characters, Rory, was a really really big reader. They talked about books and reading a lot in the show. I did another quick search. Fortunately, one of the books that were mentioned in the Gilmore Girls is The Devil in the White City by Eric Larson. So as I said before, this is the book for Chloe's Chrome Scene Corner. Chloe from Chloe Reads Books' book club and every month you either read a non-fiction book about a true crime or you read a dark fiction book. So this month it is non-fiction. It is about, how about I just read the back to you? <laughs> Chicago's World Fair of 1893 was one of the great wonders of the world. This is the extraordinary story of its realisation and of two men whose fates it linked. One was an architect, the other a serial killer. The architect was David H. Burnham. He created the White City, a massive visionary landscape of white buildings set in an incandescent wonderland of canals and gardens. The killer was H. H. Holmes, a handsome doctor with intense blue eyes who used the attraction of the Great Fair and his own devilish charms to lure... lure scores perhaps hundreds of young women to, de to their deaths. Holmes built his own edifice. He called it the World's Fair Hotel. In reality, it was a torture palace, a gas chamber, a crematorium. These two disparate yet driven men brought to life in this mesmerizing, murder mesmerizing murderous tale of the spectacle that transformed America and set it on course for the 20th century. So that sounds like it's going to be really macabre, probably really hard to read, but also really, really, really interesting. I don't tend to read true crime but I have definitely watched quite a bit of true crime and quite I feel like enjoyed isn't the right word but appreciated it <laughs> I again don't know if I'm looking forward to this one but I definitely think it'll be really interesting and I definitely really want to join in Chloe's book club Chloe is an amazing booktuber an amazing person and one of my booktube friends so I really want to join in in what she's doing so yeah roll number five is a two Translated. Right. Roll number five. We're doing okay so far. We haven't had any numbers again. So this time I got number two. We got translated. So Crystal from Bond Book Reviews just happens to be doing productivity sprints at the moment. So I just jumped on and asked if anyone knew of a short translated book because I knew that potentially it was going to be a very long TBR. So Crystal said that one of the books she is reading in October is The Transmigration, the Transmigration of Bodies by Yuri Herrera and it sounded really interesting and so I thought why not read it so we'll be buddy reading that one during the month of October and roll number six 18 18 is buddy read all right roll number six I got the number 18 and for this one I got buddy read so I'm going to use this to read every were Every Move, I should say, by Ellie Marnie. As I was saying before, this is my last to read book club's pick for the month of October. It may be a little bit of a stretch to call it a buddy read because it's a book club read, but I am buddy reading it with a bunch of different people. So I'm going to count that one. This is the third book in the Every series. We follow two protagonists, Rachel Watts and James Mycroft. It is a young adult retelling um, of the Sherlock Holmes stories. It's 19. Indie self-published. Roll number seven, I got the number 19. Again, still no double ups, so thank goodness for that. And this one is Indie self-published book. So for this one, I've actually chosen another nice short book, and that is When the Tiger Came Down the Mountain by Nevo. So this is the second book in a series. The first one is The Empress of Salt and Fortune, which I read a couple of months ago as well. I have to be honest with you, I'm not 100% sure what was really going on in the first one, but I am intrigued to see what the story is going to end up being about. So it's set in Chinese mythology and folklore, and that's kind of all I really picked up about it. But I'm intrigued to see where it's going, and yeah, it is self-published by, not self-published, it is a indie published book tour. Publishers are the publishers of this book, so that counts for that. So yeah, I'm, I'm excited to get to it and see what I make of the second one. We are on our eighth roll. Oh, we got a one. 
a memoir. Okay, guys, unfortunately, roll number eight gave me a one, which means I have to add another roll. So we're now up to 13 books. So honestly, I don't know how I'm going to go. So far, I have managed to fit in a couple of buddy reads, which is fantastic, but still not sure how it's going to pan out. But anyway, roll number eight, I got a memoir. So for this one, I'm actually going to choose a graphic novel, which is Solutions and Other Problems by Ali Brosh. Those of you that have been around for a while will probably be a little surprised to see this one on my TBR because you know that I don't tend to pick up graphic novels very much. But this is the author that had the blog Hyperbole and a Half and then the book that is the a sort of redo of the blog which I absolutely loved. I don't have that first one but I do I have read the blog and because it is a graphic novel it'll be even though it's very long it is graphic novel so it shouldn't be super long to read which is fantastic because the TBR is going to be quite long. Rowan read this one a little while ago and he really enjoyed it so yeah I'm anticipating it being a fantastic read. I just realized I haven't told you anything about it. Um, it's basically a memoir. It's about her life and yeah dealing with depression and anxiety I think is a big part of it so yeah I think it'll be really good and really interesting so looking forward to that one my battery is flashing so I'll be back in a sec roll number nine 16 Islamic inspired and for roll number nine I got the number 16 and for this one I got a Islamic inspired. So what I've chosen for this one is another book that I have had on a previous TBR that didn't re get read and that is A Mile Unbound by Aisha Saeed. So this is about, um, I'm not sure if she, what age she is, but a youngish girl who is called Amal is forced to be someone's the corrupt landlord's mother's servant to pay off the family debt and it says inspired by Malala Yousafzai which obviously Malala Yousafzai is an Islamic woman so I think that works for that prompt really well. I've heard really great things about this one also probably going to be a relatively quick read so yeah I'm looking forward to that one. Roll 10 is 14. A favourite author's first book. For the 10th roll, I got the number 14, which gave me a favourite author's first book. Hello everybody, it's Editing Mel here. I actually just changed my mind about what I was going to pick for this prompt, and I'm sort of twisting everything a little bit in order to fit it. My pre-order for The Flames of Albion by Jean Menzies dropped into my e-reader, and I was really, really excited, and I really wanted to read it. So... I've decided to twist this prompt a little bit because instead of it being one of my favourite authors first book it is going to be one of my favourite YouTubers and again I'm twisting it again because it's not Jean's first book but it's her first full-length novel so one of my favourite booktubers first full-length novels Flames of Albion by Jean Menzies. Jean is of course Jean's bookish thoughts and I love her channel and I'm really excited to read this book so yeah. Roll 11 with a four. Black author. For roll number 11 I got the number four and the prompt for that one is black author. So for this one I've actually decided to go with an Australian Aboriginal author and that is The Disappearance of Ember Crow by Amberlynn Quay Molina. I read the first of this series uh, which is The Interrogation of a Charlotte Wolf a while ago now and I really 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 enjoyed it so I'm really looking forward to picking this one up. I did also have this on a previous TBR but didn't get to it again. Are you seeing a theme here? The first one was a, I'm assuming this one will also be, a dystopian novel so it is about the tribe. The tribe are a group of young people who have special abilities so like telekinesis, memory control, stuff like that and they have broken away from society and they are living in what is kind of essentially the outback of Australia and yeah it's really it was a really fun read it was really interesting and I'm really looking forward to reading this one so that's that one. Roll number 12 is a 12. A Muslim author. Okay, 
Roll number 12 got me the number 12, which is my second 12. So hopefully roll number 13 will not be a 1 or a 12. Fingers crossed. Anyway, roll number 12 got me Muslim author. So for this one, I have decided to go with Internment by Samira Ahmed. It's been one year since the census landed 17-year-old Layla Amin and her family on the registry. Five months since the Attorney General ruled there was precedent for relocation of citizens during times of war. And one month since the President declared that Muslims are now a threat to America. Now Layla and her parents are suddenly taken from their home and forced into an internment camp for Muslim American citizens. So I think that sounds really interesting. I think it sounds like it's going to be really hard hitting. Yeah, I'm excited to read this one. I've heard some good things about this one from various different booktubers as well. So that's that one. Final roll. Crossing everything. 11. One word title. My final roll, roll number 13, I got 11, which means that this is in fact my final roll. Whew. So for 11, I got one word title. Now I'm a little bit uncertain about what to do with this one because my body read with Ellie of Pyramids by Terry Pratchett is one word, but I do have my books that will self-destruct in one year that I am actually getting to the end of and I've only read one book off of that. So... I really, really need to read some of the books on that because it will expire in January. And one of those is Middlesex by Jeffrey Eugenides. This one has one word in the title. But this is a fantasy. It is about it's sort of a fantasy a retelling of Egyptian mythology set on the Discworld. Terry Pratchett is an excellent writer. He's one of my favourite authors. I've read this one before. I really like it. Plus, it's reasonably short and... Yeah, so I'm leaning towards this one, but I do really need to read some of these. And this one seems really interesting as well. So this is about, um, I'll just read the blurb for this one also. <laughs> I was born twice. First as a baby girl on a remarkably smogless Detroit day in January of 1960. And then again as a teenage boy in an emergency room near Petoskey, Michigan in August of 1974. So begins the breathtaking story of Calliope Stephanides and three generations of the Greek-American Stephanides families. To understand why Calliope is not like other girls, she has to uncover a guilty family secret and the astonishing genetic history that turns her into Cal, one of the most audacious and wondrous narrators in contemporary fiction. So it sounds like it could be really, really, really interesting, but it's quite a bit thicker <laughs> than Pyramids, and I think it's going to be a lot more in-depth subject matter and also I've not read it before whereas obviously I've read this one I can fly through Pratchett pretty quickly so I don't really know what to do because I definitely have to read this one with Ellie anyway but then I really need to read some of the, some more of these before January so <laughs> can I fit both of them on I can try cross my fingers so potentially two books for one that is it that is all of the roles for October roll of reads I managed to get most of my buddy reads and stuff on there the only two that I didn't get was Burial Rites by Hannah Kent but like I said I'm only going to worry about getting to that if I can I don't know if I can so sorry Helen I think I might have to bail out of this one this month and the other one is The Two Towers by J.R.R. Tolkien um, which I definitely need to read because it's been quite a while since I read them and I really enjoyed my my reread of the fellowship of the ring fellowship of the ring but yeah so i really need to get to this one as well so let me show you the pile of books for this month this is the pile of books for this month not including ebooks and audiobooks this is ridiculous i'm going to end up with a lot of punishments in november i think but yeah <laughs> I think that's it for me today. Please comment below if you have any thoughts on any of the books that I chose. If you like any of these books, any one in particular you think I need to prioritise over the rest, please comment all that below as well. If you'd like to leave me a comment but you don't know what, then please leave me a stack of books emoji because I have a giant stack of books to read. All of my social media details are listed in the description below, so if you'd like to go and find me on any of those other platforms, please feel free to do so. Thank you all so much for watching 
watching. I really do hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I would absolutely love it if you would subscribe to my channel and give this video a thumbs up. Thank you all so much for watching. I really do hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you next time.